Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fridays with Fran and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about two of my favourite sheep breeds um, both in the country and that we've got here at the farm park and they're both of the Dartmoor breeds so from down in South Devon we've got the white faced Dartmoor behind me here and then we'll also talk about the grey faced Dartmoor that are quite different. <laughs> The little white-faced Dartmoors are a beautiful breed of sheep, very sweet in the nose. From a distance, they look like any other sort of big fluffy white sheep, the sort of ones that you draw as a cartoon. But when you get up closer, they have a beautifully long ringletty fleece, so they're known as a long wool breed. The white-faced Dartmoor is a hill breed of sheep, so they're designed to live up on Dartmoor, and they still do in big flocks. They're on the Wire Breed Survival Trust watch list, so they are a breed of concern, but there are a lot of um, enthusiastic Dartmoor farmers still farming them, as they would have done over the last hundreds of years. The ewes don't have horns, so they're known as polled. They've got little um, flat heads. The rams, though, are a horned breed, so they do have horns on their heads. Um, one thing with the white-faced Dartmoor, similarly with the herdwicks, the quality of the horns, the type of the horns, um, actually makes no difference in the quality of the sheep. So um, aesthetically, you often like the look of one with a great big impressive curly set, um, but sometimes the better ram actually just has slightly small horns and um, in the show ring or at sales, they pay little regard to their horns as it's the rest of the sheep that is important. So the fleece is an important part. Um, they have this little black button nose. They actually want a black nose. We get the occasional lamb that comes through with a pink nose and that's a, a breed fault. They just want a perfectly little black button nose. They're really tough and hardy breed of sheep designed to live up on Dartmoor look after themselves. We've had them here at the farm park um, for 13, 14 years now and our flock of Dartmoors were the first flock of Dartmoors to leave Devon in over 100 years. Um, our stockman Mike, who's been here for 15 years now, he moved from Devon. His family have always had white-faced Dartmoors, so when he arrived working here at the farm park, he was keen to get the white-faced Dartmoor, a breed he's incredibly passionate about, also a rare breed up here on the farm park too. And since they've been featured here at the farm park and episodes of Countryfile, it's actually really boosted the popularity of this breed, and there are now several flocks dotted around the country, although the main hold is still um, down in Devon. Every year we take rams to the Exeter sale, um, and we've done really well in the past few years. We got champion a couple of years ago, which was really exciting. Um, and we generally get a few places while we're down there. So the lambs down behind us here, they are March, April born. So they're just over a month old, most of them now. Already their curly little fleeces are coming through. You can see those beautiful little black button nose and very short, thick ears. I do think like our Herdwick sheep, gray in the body with a white face, there are a lot of similarities in terms of their head shape and their head um, characteristics and that nose and the really deep, thick ears. They tend to only have singles or twins. We don't really get triplets from the white-faced Dartmoors, um, but when they do have them, they grow well and they do brilliantly. We've had a couple of crossbred white-faced Dartmoors before, not always intentional, and those have been fast-growing meat animals too. Amongst the lambs here, we've got some ewe lambs, some females. Um, a lot of them will be kept to rejoin the flock or sold to other breeders. And we've also got a few ram lambs. Some of them are starting to stand out as quite smart. They've got a strong head carriage. So hopefully, two years time, they'll be at the extra sale and doing fantastically there. They all have to be inspected before they're registered. So we take them down there. And then um, some of the key members of the society will look them over and decide whether they're fit enough to pass their inspection, whether they can then go on to breeding as breeding rams. So just up behind us here we've got a slightly smaller lamb um and he's got a very different fleece. As I mentioned, we occasionally get crossbred, sometimes on purpose, but like this one by accident, that was the last lamb born here on the farm this year. He's actually only two weeks old and he's nearly as big as the rest. I feel sorry for poor mum there. Um, when we got right to the end of topping season and we assumed that they were all in lamb, all of our flock went together and the Dorset rams were with all the rare breeds and the commercial ewes. And what it meant was that this ewe was covered by the Dorset rams rather than the white-faced Dartmoor. Um, not sure why she didn't get pregnant early on. Maybe she did and it slipped and she got pregnant again. Um, but she does have a beautiful Dorset lamb. Just a shame he's not a pure white-faced Dartmoor. Now we've got the opposite Dartmoor breed. These are the grey-faced Dartmoors. So we've got the white-faced Dartmoor. These are the grey-faced Dartmoor. Uh, this is actually the breed that I have at home. So they've been my real passion um, for about 10 years now. 
Um, so they've got a classic little black button nose, quite iconic, really popular now with small holders right around the country. So as opposed to the white faced Dartmoor where the breed is nearly completely um, still on Dartmoor with just a scattering of flocks around the country, with the grey faced Dartmoor there are now many little flocks dotted right around the country. The biggest flocks are just over 100, so still fairly small when you compare them to commercial farmers. They're fairly hard to look after in the respect that they have a great big heavy fleeces and that means that they're predisposed to quite a few problems such as fly strike with maggots. Um, they're also fairly good at getting stuck on their back and you may have seen my earlier videos with my gorgeous little lamb, lamb, um, heartbreakingly a couple of weeks ago, lamb got stuck on his back and in between us checking in one day and the next back at my parents farm where I'd taken him home, um, sadly lamb passed away which was really rather horrible way to go. So these girls will be taking in for shearing tomorrow, they have their wool cut off um, which will make them feel an awful lot more comfortable. Here at the farm park, the few greyface Dartmoors that we have are crossbred with our valet. Um, so the greyface is a rare breed, but not as critically endangered as many that we have around the um, farm park here. And so as an exciting project, we've been crossing them with our valet black nose. And we have had the most beautiful, cute little lambs, as you'll see behind me here. And we've also got some of the examples of the year before um, greyface Dartmoor cross valet, which has all been an experiment. There's a handful of other breeds in here too. So we've got a Kerry Hill cross, um, which we did last year. This year the valet only went to the um, grey-faced Dartmoors and one Cotswold. So the grey face, as I said, is um, slightly harder to look after than the white faced Dartmoor, who's a tough and hardy breed. Grey face is still brilliant on Dartmoor, um, if you get it right, um, but it is just that wool that makes them that little bit more challenging to look after, um, but really popular, as I say, right around the country with small holders. They're a heavier, chunkier breed than the white-faced Dartmoor um, and the rams are also polled. So the white-faced Dartmoor rams will have horns on their head. The grey-faced Dartmoor shouldn't have horns on their head. Similarly, um, they have to be inspected before they're registered. With a white-faced Dartmoor, that's done when they're about 18 months old. With a grey-faced Dartmoor, that's done as lambs, so they're only about 8 months old. So you have to pick your rams that look like they're going to be good, take them to an inspection centre um, and then they'll judge them and check that they're good for inspection. The older breeders who've had more than 5 crops of lambs inspected and passed can then go on and just self-register the very best. As I say, this is a breed that tend to be um, a small holders breed, so little flocks dotted right around the country just because the lambs are just so cute. They've got that real teddy bear little face which makes them really, really popular. They're also really quiet and calm, so our white-faced Dartmoors are still very much a hill breed. They can be a bit skittish, not as bad as breeds such as the Kerry Hill, but they still have a hill nature, very much a sheep. The grey faces are really easy to tame to a bucket. Um, lamb in those last few weeks was always ready to come up for cuddles, as is his brother. Um, whereas uh, the great white face is still very much a normal sheep. So join us next time for another episode of Fridays with Fran. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. And next time we'll be focusing on our golden Guernsey goat, like this lady here, and we'll be talking the ins and outs of the breed. Yeah.